with their pumped up. Whoa! Whoa, folks! That's right! It's what you've been waiting for! The Depression Chamber! Live on April Fool's Day! Will I trick you all by actually reading stories of happiness and glee? Prosperity and wonder? Could it be, folks? Could it be? Let's find out once I start playing the music that we're going to listen to. The music will set the tone for what is to follow, folks. What could it be? Oh, it's the sad music. Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, it's loud enough. It's fine. Okay. I was like, I wonder if they can hear it. It looks very soft, but it's soft by design. Just like my dick! What? Why would I say that? That's just bizarre. Folks, welcome to the Depression Chamber. If you're new here, let me give you the rundown. I really should have put this in the title. But this is a show where listeners and fans like you submit their personal demons, their stories with depression and isolation and suicidal thoughts. And we all come together on Monday nights now. Saddest day of the week, I reckon. And I just read people's anonymously submitted stories, and we all bask in their misery. There are many, many reasons why we do this show, and each person listening at home has their own personal reason why they're listening. It is not for me to decide. If somebody wants to listen out of maliciousness to mock those who are less fortunate than, than themselves. That's that's their cross to bear. If people want to listen, because they themselves are miserable. And Mumkey pretends not to laugh at them. Because they themselves are miserable. And they want to hear some relatable tales. Perhaps that's why some people listen. Who am I to say? I am just the depression chamber captain. Captain of the ship. And uh, let's go on a journey, folks. Let's go on a journey. This one was sent in February 19th. A little over a month ago. About five and a half weeks ago. Not too long. Okay, let's just begin. Let's begin, shall we? This all starts with Nintendo. Fucking Nintendo. When this all first started, I had been on Discord for a solid, like, five months. Only used it to talk to my Canadian friend, Timothy. He's irrelevant for this story. Okay, good detail so far. There is the JRPG game called Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for the Nintendo Switch. I got the game, was about halfway through it. It's pretty damn good. So I joined the Reddit Discord server for it. And because I'm a cringe master arsler, I decided to check their role-playing text channel. Some pretty gay shit was going on that didn't follow the game's canon at all. It was just some edgy OC shit. So I just introduced myself and boom, we're in business for like five minutes. Then the RP ends because it's shit and nobody wants to do it. So I decide, hey, how about a roleplay that is just, that is more just fluff and follows canon a bit more? Everybody is on board and we start. Goes smoothly for a good week or two. Then a new Discord server gets made, which is run by one of the RP guys when he makes it. We get a lot more freedom and the general server outside of it is run better. But I'm going on a tangent and need to get to the point already. So I've become pretty good friends with one guy who was role-playing. Gotta call him Tora, cause that is the name of the character he was playing. But one day he just disappears. We figure he just has some, uh, has to do something, so we continue without him. 
This happens again and again, and the dude isn't on for like two months. And there is one person who is the friend of Tora, so we ask what is going on, and she says that he is in the hospital or something. I was the first person to ask her about him, and I actually started to become somewhat of friends with her. Her name is Bianca. You'll see why quotes in a while. Our conversations are mostly just about video games, and then we begin talking about anime. And I was... An uncultured swine who only watched the most popular anime at the time, which was My Hero Academia. So we started talking about that. And at around this time, Tora finally got back and started RPing in the group again, but not for long. As the leader of the group started becoming kind of toxic, and me and Tora both left that shit. So I talked to Bianca one day, and I basically say, Hey, do you do the whole role-playing time... Tora, what? Hey, do you do the whole role-playing time Tora finally? What the fuck? Okay, it didn't go down. Hey, do you do the whole role-playing thing? They said they were huge on it, and we started to do that. We only really did video games, and it was all fun and games. Then, after about two months into our friendship, I get hit with a big old bombshell. She admits that Tora was basically just her on an alt account! Oh! And this really should have been a sign that Bianca was kind of scummy, but I ignored it for some reason. And again, our relationship stays very normal. Then this is where shit starts getting interesting, so strap up your seatbelts and get your popcorn kiddos. We start talking about some personal shit. I can't remember the exact specifics because this was a long time ago. But they start talking to me about how she had incestual sex with her younger sister when they were both both drunk. And that's the end of the email. <laughs> Hashtag relatable, am I right, folks? <laughs> okay. Uh, this guy sent a follow-up email immediately. Uh, but that's it. Wait, did he rewrote it? I don't care. We, we got the gist, buddy. We don't need to read that one again. Okay. It wasn't my favorite story. I didn't really get that one too much. But let's move on. This one's a bit longer. Hey, Mumkey. My name is Lewis, but you can call me Inazo. It's what I go by online. I'm Irish. I seem to recall seeing an Inazo in a chat or in a Discord or something. So maybe we know this man. My story isn't really as bad as the people that you've read the stories of on stream so far, so by no means am I attempting to set a new bar here. Well, the last time somebody said that, it was an hour and a half of pure cringe, so we'll see. <laughs> I live in a place called Maynooth, but feel no reason to change that if you read this out loud, as it's not an important detail. It'd be like censoring that someone is from Texas, for example. I guess one of the main things going on with me is that I have a memory... I live in a place... Okay, I, I keep not skipping down by accident because my small monkey brain forgot how to read. I have a memory problem that people either don't acknowledge or don't know about. With family, it pretty much feels sometimes like I'm just a walking corpse of the person I was before the memory loss. And anything I say now is just adding on to who I am to them rather than setting the foundation. They can't really understand, or just refuse to accept that the person I was is gone because they, I don't have those memories. I basically can't remember most of my life because I forget most of the things that happened to me. I'm not too sure of the reason for this despite the fact that I've been going to appointments for tests to determine what it is for a few years now. It's pretty much just triggered by random things, and I don't really know all of the triggers. One thing that triggers memory loss for me is getting haircuts. Another thing is certain colors. There's just a shit ton of triggers I'm unaware of. My mum is so used to me forgetting who she is that although she once would cry when I asked if she was my mother, the most recent time it happened, she just said, Oh, fuck off. I imagine it was out of shock. For a lot of my life, this problem resulted in an identity crisis. I was still only a child, but I couldn't re remember who I was. I spent a lot of years trying to figure that out. Who I am, I mean. It's pretty easy for me to know if I like something, but it's difficult for me to find things that I'm passionate about. 
One of the only things I have is playing baseball one-handed with a two-handed metal bat and hurling, that's a sport in my country. The baseball tends to fuck up my arm to be honest. I hit too hard and swing too fast. Sometimes I just straight up dislocate my arm if I miss the ball on a swing. Which does happen now and again because I'm far-sighted and don't have glasses yet. So I'm pretty much blind if something is directly in front of me or gets too close. So I can't actually see the ball or the bat when I swing. It's just muscle memory when I swing. I would use two arms, but the dyspraxia fucks up my balance and I can't hit far with two hands because of it. With one arm, I'm able to hit from further away. Lots of details about him playing baseball with himself. He's just like Frankie Munez. Uh, I think this guy uh, gets his memory reset a little more often than Frankie Munez. I think the route of my depression comes from the fact that through the years of self-discovery, I've determined that the only thing I'm really any good at is protecting people because after all of the fighting and training against it, I find it pretty easy to show no reaction to pain despite how sensitive I've always been to it. But I have no one. I want to find love and friendship, but I seem to scare people. The problem is that since I moved to a new school in fifth year, it was like two years ago when I was around 16, I haven't made any friends due to my generally expressionless face when I'm quiet or tired like I always am. And the fact that people don't really know anything about me except some incorrect rumors. Like through the years, I've learned to not react to pain so I could protect people but now the barrier keeping me from developing any friends is that in the new school, people are spreading the rumor that I can't feel pain, which is untrue. I think I only made myself uh, seem more scared to people when I tried to explain that I can feel it, but I just don't react. This sounds familiar. Have we done a story about a guy who said he couldn't feel pain or he didn't react to pain? Maybe this is uh, a commonality with this brand of autism. I mean, depression. I'm pretty pale because as a kid I got chicken pox, and then the adult version of chicken pox a few years later. So I became pale and my immune system became really low, making me always sick. I've been pale since. On top of that, I'm skinny, ginger, and I have a different uniform to other people because I pass out if I'm too hot. We've heard this before? I don't think so. Is this, a, this isn't a copy pasta, is it? It seems different enough. There are parts of this I don't remember reading before. Maybe there's just a lot of uh, similarities. Surely this isn't something we've done before, right? He probably forgot that he sent it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't remember that baseball shit. So uh, we'll assume this is a different one. He could have sent this in again with different details, forgetting that he's done it before. <laughs> this is definitely a copy pasta. I don't know. I don't know. If you can find a link to it. Okay, where did we leave off? Uh, on top of that, I'm skinny, ginger, and I have a different uniform to other people because I pass out if I'm too hot, so I have to wear the PE uniform. I'm pretty much just always wearing tracksuit pants and a blue PE collared t-shirt that's never buttoned and has no sleeves, regardless of whether it's snowing, hailing, windy, or sunny. It sounds like he is describing an anime. <laughs> At the most, I wear the P.E. hoodie. My point is, I stand out because of my appearance, so people can figure out who I am pretty easily if they need to pick me out of a crowd. And because of that, they don't talk to me before they even know me from personal experience. You're the founder of this copy pasta. Oh, I'm sure Bacon Crafted Curtain. I used to be a lot more antisocial and confused, but I started following Bushido a few years ago, and it became my life. But again and again, the one problem that I'm encountering is that I follow a code to protect people. And the only thing I'm good at is protecting, yet I have no one to protect and seem to scare people. This is... this is dangerously familiar. Maybe I wrote this and forgot it. Is this about me? We'll keep going. Right now, I'm pretty much just living in a state of trying to be invisible, as I'd rather have people think nothing of my presence rather than fear me. Although it feels kind of fucked to know that if I lost all of my memories again, they wouldn't know because I'd seem uh, the exact same to them. I'd just, I'd still just be quiet and expressionless. 
As for context for why the whole no pain rumor is freaking me out, while most people are either afraid of me or see me and assume I'm weak because of how I look, I worry that things will turn out like before, where people would hear the rumors about not feeling pain and stab me because they assume it's alright. It tends to piss me off. And although I enjoy fighting and I don't want to hurt someone for being an idiot and confusing the inability to feel pain, which I don't have, with the ability to not bleed, one person in my old school broke the end off of and melted one of those see-through plastic black pens until it was sharp, warm, and the ink had turned purple. They then flung it at me and stabbed me in the head. A guy was telling me that my head was bleeding and I was laughing thinking it was a joke until I got blood in my eye. He got too many haircuts and he sent this. I also don't want to come across as some sort of delinquent because I'm always sleeping, sleeping in class or at lunch, passing out from the heat, skipping school, which is just getting kept home sick so often because I have a low immune system and always get really sick, or I just straight up end up forgetting my bag, locker keys, or almost end up just end up getting up and leaving in the middle of class because I forgot what things are or where I am temporarily. Plus there's all of these F's I've got, failing most of my classes for the past three or so years because I couldn't remember anything. I also pretty much just train every day at a GAA field next to my house trying to get stronger or better, which to the outside observer just looks like a guy with hair covering his face hitting a ball across the field or a metal bat half the size half his size using one hand. I had to buy a new bat because the old one became so dented that I couldn't use it anymore. A neighbor of mine said that as I swing the bat, it looks like my arm is gonna snap off. I think he also said that I look like some sort of antichrist or else someone else did. I'm pretty much just living a life of anti-socialism, not by my own choice. While at the same time spending my days on a field that's always empty, just training while people walk past, coming and going from the estate, hoping that someone will want to join in or talk. I've trained so much in some places that the hard green grassland, which was once there, has just become soft mud that your foot sinks into as you step on it. All because of the twisting of my foot against the ground as I hit the ball, completely crushing the grass and leaving a muddy footprint. That field is probably the closest thing I have that feels like a home. Even when people are talking about something so close to home that I feel like an expert on the subject, the second I speak, people go pale and listen and just stare without blinking or moving until they just silently walk away. If I had started school differently, Maybe I'd be talking to friends right now and have people to protect. But instead, on the first day of that new year and that new school after moving, I had come in sick after a night of no sleep into a big room full of people I didn't know. That all knew each other, and every time someone introduced themselves, I didn't really talk. I was just a quiet, pale guy with really long hair that was getting in my eyes and making it look like I was crying as it poked them. My eyes, I mean. Eventually in the year, someone showed me a joke website saying that I was a school shooter and I just laughed about it. My social life wasn't helped by the fact that I can't remember people's names and have trouble remembering faces. After that, people found out about the pain thing in different ways over time. One of those ways being all of the times that I'd hit into something out of clumsiness or walk into an open lock or door by accident and wouldn't even react. Or from, or from someone who knew about it from me, telling entire classes of people that I don't feel pain, causing me to have to explain myself to clear the misunderstanding. I never actually thought that people were afraid of me. I thought they just heard the school shooter joke and thought low of me from then on. Until a few instances of people acting afraid of me made me think that maybe that's what was going on. Most recently, I sat down at the same empty table I always do in Irish class, and for once there was a person there, a new person who I saw as a chance at talking to someone who finally didn't know me from any stories. So I sat down beside them in the seat I always sat in. I said, hi, nice to meet you. And following that, she said, sorry, as if she were freaked out and then grabbed all of her stuff and quickly, as quickly as she could and went to a different table far away. That was when I realized that in pretty much every class, I'm sitting at an empty table. Even in some classes, people will squeeze in together at a table that won't fit all of them, while I have a table to myself far from everyone else. 
I guess it's... I guess it's ironic that I dedicate my days to looking for someone to call a friend and training to protect them, yet I seem to be scaring people. Despite my attempts at trying to appear physically weak, I mean, I'm ginger, pale, skinny, only around 5'8 or 5'9, which is pretty average over here, and I act friendly. I kind of feel like some sort of character that was designed for a story full of things suddenly happening, and someone just removed all of, all of the things meant to trigger any climactic events. So I'm left just waiting for something to happen. When things happen, I, I'm great in a situation. I can fight, I can sew, and carry a kit. I can- I make people laugh pretty easily from jokes, I'm willing to give my life to protect someone, and I pretty much only care about love, friendship, and maintaining the innocence of those who don't deserve to feel pain, even if that means acting as a shield. As for my mind, I'm kind of just trying not to go insane from the bleakness of daily life and the absence of memories. When people wake up from a dream that feels so real that they question who they are and if it was real, they know that it isn't real because they're able to- able to compare it to the memories of their whole life. I don't have the memories to do that, though. When I have a dream of a girl who I spent years with in a loving relationship, just as an example, and then suddenly wake up, I don't really know that it isn't real because I don't have the ability to say, I know that's not true because I remember who I am and the life I've lived, and that just doesn't add up. It's confusing. Besides the main things, my personality is pretty much just a collection of traits that, at that particular time, I can remember having, and me just winging it. I once woke up from a dream believing that I was a child, and this child didn't understand the real world yet because he was too young, so he believed that the Grim Reaper was going to come for him and kill him. I then spent about five hours believing that I was going to die if I closed my eyes, all because I was in the dark, while at the same time, I had trouble staying awake because I hadn't drank anything and, almost, and kept almost passing out. I was in a constant state of being conscious and asleep for a few seconds at a time. Slipping in and out of consciousness, over and over again for those five hours until I snapped out of it and remembered who I was again. It's a mix of night terrors and memory loss, creating a delusional state where the night terror is the only thing I can remember at the time. Honestly, there's probably bigger concerns in my life, like the fact that the child abuser dad that I never grew up with that hurt my older siblings has been trying to track me down since the moment that we moved countries to Ireland to run away from him when I was only four, all the way until now, as I'm only seven days away from 18. All because he wants to try to turn me against my family. That honestly never really comes to mind, though, or even affects me in the slightest. Yet the memory thing in the life of social isolation really does. This is how I live now. I just spend my days training and watching over everyone in school until s someone finally needs protecting. And when school's done, I walk home and train. I'm not sure why I even really do this. I guess it's because I have so much trouble knowing what to do that when I set multiple alarms to brush my teeth, as I walk to the bathroom to brush them, I still somehow end up forgetting to brush my teeth, yet every day I still get the urge to train and get stronger. I also never really have any passions or dreams besides finding love, and yet I always want to protect people. So these things are what I spend my days doing, for lack of having something in life. I guess it's the best thing I can do though, considering my lack of ability at everything else. It's not even that I get a little voice in my head telling me something is wrong when I see it. Rather, I get a little voice in my head saying horrible shit when I look at people, and I get pissed off, and I tell it to fuck off. Those little thoughts make me angry at myself for even allowing them to be in my own head. That's what makes me realize that I want to do good, because it's evil. It's because evil pisses me off. That's pretty much everything. I was wondering if you had any advice. I'm not trying to put pressure on you to deliver some sort of life-changing advice. I just want your views or opinions if you would be okay with offering them. Thanks for reading this. If you did, and thanks for your time. Oh, and then he says, uh, just a heads up, this isn't a troll. Suspicious. Okay, so we have the 
Albino memory loss uh, hero. Are all these depression chambers just one big April Fool's? No, this was sent in five weeks ago. They had no idea when I would read it. Memory loss albino saint who wants to protect those around him even though they all hate him and think he's a scary monster man who does not react to pain. What's the advice? I would say... You sound like a cringy anime character. You're doing all this training for the legendary day where somebody will need your protection. My guess is that day will never come. The people at your school probably think they need protection from you, not from each other. I think if a girl was actually in danger, she probably would want Chad to save her and not the long-haired, uh, dark hair covering, pale face, probably trench coat wearing guy who sits alone at a table. Um... And with all this training you're doing, you're probably a lethal weapon. You got weapon one and weapon two. You see some bully picking on a kid, you might accidentally kill that mofo and end up in cuffs. I would say, for the safety of yourself and those around you, uh, <laughs> don't worry about being the protector. Maybe stop thinking like you're Batman. Try to be a normal guy. Nobody wants you to protect them. They just want you to be a normal guy. Get a haircut. I know that they trigger memory loss, but you can't have that long hair in your face, buddy. <laughs> if not, just fucking tie it back. Uh, keep studying your Bushido, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. You, uh, just based on how you describe yourself. You're the type of person I would want to hang out with, but I only hang out with weirdos who beat their girlfriends. Uh, I, I purposely hang out with weirdos on, uh, those are the people I like to be with. I would hang out with you, but if you want to make actual friends, not on the internet, you gotta change a lot about yourself, and that's gonna be really hard when you can't even keep your memories intact. I don't even know why I would give advice, because it sounds like you would forget it. <laughs> you gonna rewatch this every day? I don't know, chat, do you guys have any advice? What advice does the chat have? Don't be a millennial? He's fake and gay. Don't be cringe. Don't be Batman. Good advice. Shave the neck beard. Get a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Commit Sudoku. Okay. He's gonna forget that he even sent that email in anyway, so... Um... Okay, here's one from a girl who looks like has trouble hitting on a boy. Could this be? Or is this just a fake name? Let's find out. I've been, we've been waiting for an Ashley-style story, but from an incel girl who has a crush on Chad. That's what I, that's the, that's the, the golden nugget we've been waiting for. Forget these typical normie chicken nuggets. We want that golden nugget. Dip it into the Szechuan sauce of knowledge. Take a big old bite. Let's see if this is actually a girl, though. I feel like this story is fitting for your Depression Chamber show. As I've been watching the Ashley one, and I feel like stories like mine are ones that fit. So anyway, here's the story about how I accidentally became the face of the anti-LGBT movement at my school and how it got so bad I had to be homeschooled. For context, I'll start with the setup for this. I will use fake names for their privacy, even though I do not think they are the type of people that would watch your content. Anyway, it kind of, it started out kind of harmless with a good friend of mine, Luke. Me and Jacob have been friends for about three years at this point, and the open house was to be that week, so we were going to meet old friends. One of these is a trans boy. This is important later on. As far as I had known, this guy was fully out of the closet. Let's name him Sammy. So not knowing any better, I told Luke about Sammy, and I felt like I was just telling him information that was readily available. Fast forward to September of 2016. It's Friday, and there's a teacher work day, so no one has to be at school. 
For me, I had spent last night two hours away for a Smash tournament. This might be a guy. I don't think this is a girl. This doesn't sound like a girl. So I was tired once I got home and a bit groggy waking up. I only say this because without that, I would have handled this situation differently and probably would have actually killed myself. Anyway, I wake up with a swarm of texts from Luke. He's fucking pissed because apparently the whole Sammy thing was not public knowledge. It was accidental on my part, and to this day I regret it. Luke and a few others started hurling insults and death threats at me after I started responding. I should also clarify that me and Luke are still good friends after this, as we've settled our differences. I remember one of Sammy's friends threatening to beat me within an inch of my life on Monday when we got back. My parents caught me about to hang myself and shipped me off to a mental hospital where I got a few other stories if anyone wants to hear them eventually. Like how I'm now friends with a guy who almost blew up his school and shot it up. And how I've lost contact with a person there that was very close to me. Nevertheless, I stay my weekend plus Monday there and go home, generally feeling better about myself, mainly because I can actually eat some good food. The next morning, I am confronted about it by Sammy, but I guess thanks to being in there for a weekend, I wasn't as bothered by it. I eventually learned that my principal somehow got a hand on the screenshots of the insults and was threatening kids with lawsuits, telling them they could be arrested because of this shit. Here's where we get to the good shit. In the 10th grade, I meet a really good friend, a good kid and nice friend, let's call him Travis. Travis is a good person, however, his friend circle overlaps with a kid named Maria. They are also a trans boy. Surely you mean he is also a trans boy. Very, very disgusting language here. Misuse of pronouns. They are also a trans boy, but as a result of the things this person has done to me, I lack the respect to call her a guy. Whoa! Anyway, let's get to that. I was playing Pokemon with Travis, and this guy moves over to his friend circle, which involves Maria. I hear her yelling at her friends to get away from me, with the claim that I am a homophobe. I know for a fact that I am not, so I shot it down. Eventually, though, it gets worse. By the end of it, Maria was being a piece of shit and trying to inconvenience me in any way possible. This involves slamming the door in front of me on our way to class and berating me whenever we share a class together, among others. Hell, her friends got involved. In one instance, whenever I tried to have lunch with them, they would scream at me in a way that you would think there was a mass shooting going on. Fast forward to September 20th, 2018. I get an email from Maria. In it, she says she has evidence that I am a homophobe, transphobe, and pedophile. Can't be a pedophile under the age of 18, I don't think. I don't think that's how the math works out on that one. And threatens to share it with the principal. That right there was where it all came crashing down. I could do nothing but think about it all day. It consumed my thoughts, and I did nothing to stop it. It got to the point where I just cried right there. Someone asked if I was okay, and I straight up said no. This person was in that class too, and just had the most smug look on her face. Thinking back, if I could have done anything differently, I would have taken her computer and just smashed it against the wall. At that point, I wouldn't care. She destroyed my life enough to where it would be justified. <laughs> she didn't deny being a pedo. <laughs> I don't think this is a girl. I think the, the username in the email was a lie. Now it's been almost five months, and surprisingly, nothing has been done. My suspicion is that she never intended to share these obviously fake claims, and just wanted to see me break down. She is a terrible person all around, and I genuinely think if one day she found out about me killing myself, she would celebrate. In those five months, it's kind of ironic that despite still being the go-to person when you talk about an anti-LGBT person at that school, I've come out to a lot of my friends and Twitter followers as a bisexual trans girl. Okay. I was right. It, w it was a girl all along. Well, not all along, but now. <laughs> Officially now. Whether or not you use this for your stream or channel or whatever, thanks for telling, letting me tell my story. Uh, I just remembered, but in between today and me writing this, I decided I wasn't a trans girl. <laughs> oh, 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 o
<laughs> That's a decision somebody can make, huh? <laughs> decision? Oh, <laughs> you decided your gender, huh? <laughs> I kind of feel like a traitor, and I manipulated my friends, but this is probably a side effect of the stories I told in this email. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All my female audience is trans, you're right. Wouldn't have it any other way. <sighs> okay. Well, what do you guys think of that story? <laughs> what an evil laugh, yeah. <laughs> Join me, Spider-Man! <laughs> Don't tell Harry. Shit story. It was pretty shit. Show your female penis. Boosie alert. <laughs> My screen's not frozen. Your screen's frozen. Asterios is cracking his liberal knuckles. If I'm frozen, it doesn't look frozen to me. Just reset. It's working for me. I would never freeze up on my audience like that. Are you kidding me? Asterios is pissed. <laughs> the only female fan is the one he fucked. Well... Anyway. No, I didn't freeze. No. I don't believe it. I'm about to end this man's career. Vinny! Vinny T, how dare you assume anybody's gender! Until they tell you what they decided to be at the end of the story, you can't assume! It was Schrodinger's gender. When I, when I guessed it was a girl at the beginning, I was right and wrong until we got to the follow-up email. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> okay, okay. New story. Thank you, RoboSlop. I know I did not freeze. I never freeze. Hey, Mumkey. First of all, I already sent you this, but you're live right now, so I was thinking you'd see it faster this way. Nope. <laughs> sent this on February 19th. Hello, Mumkey. I've been following you for a long time now. I saw the Depression Chamber live stream, and in it, you mentioned that some of the oldest ones are two years... Wait, I think I've already seen this one. I swear I've read this before. I recognize the name, too. Why would... Why, stop sending your same fucking story in multiple times! I'll read them all, eventually! <laughs> Okay, here's a... Uh... <laughs> I don't think this one is April Fool's. I met Asperger five days ago. I got roped into watching my three-month-old niece while my brother got his hair cut. So there I am, sitting in the waiting area of a barber shop with my niece, and who walks in but Brandon himself. I was nervous as shit and just kept looking at him as he was sitting there with his alcohol and waited, but, but was too scared to say anything to him. Pretty soon, my niece started crying, and I'm trying to quiet her down because I didn't want her to bother Brandon, but she wouldn't stop. Pretty soon, he gets up and walks over. He started running his hands through her hair and asked what was wrong. I replied she was probably hungry or something. So Brandon put down his rolling rock, picked up my niece, and lifted his shirt. He breastfeed her right there in the middle of the barbershop. He proceeded to take out a flask from his jacket, took a swig, and proceeded to beat her. Nice guy, pretty chill about it. I don't know, I think that one might be an April Fool, folks. That doesn't sound real. I don't think that happened. Probably real. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I'm like, I'm on the fence about that one. I don't know if it was real or not. <laughs> this is breastfeeding. <laughs> it's obviously real. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was real for me. <laughs> oh no, here's one from Animated Demon. <laughs> oh no. Ah. <laughs> Demon, are you ready? I hope this isn't a real story from you, Demon. <laughs> oh, did the music end? Okay, let's start it over. Okay, this is this is from Animated Demon here in the chat. Uh, he doesn't seem to be reacting to the fact that we're about to read his story, so... I don't know. No, don't read! <laughs> I hope it's not another joke one. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Well, it all started when I was yet a boy. Specifically, when I was 12, I was moved to another town. I met some of my best friends in this town, yet my worst enemies. I was bullied for my weight and Asian-like smile. <laughs> what? I hated these kids and wanted them to drown. I told my brother this and he no longer talks to me for it. I stole all his money from his piggy bank and shed on his carpet, so now we're even. <laughs> Anywho, I met my best friend, who we will call Cha Inc. I befriended him after we both overly talked about our obsession with porn. <laughs> he is the best and only friend I had. And my arch, my E arch nemeses, we will call Ray, Danny, and Brandon. I didn't know these guys IRL, but I watched them on stream. I met Ray, female, on Discord, and he was a nice girl. We talked and she wanted my nudes, so I gave them to her. She then spammed them on my favorite servers. <laughs> on, spammed them on Twitter, tagging me, and spammed them on 4chan. I then sent her a video of me putting a hammer hamster in a sock and beat the shit out of it while in the sock. She then reported my account and I lost it. One account lost. Then I met Danny, who was also nice, and actually met IRL. She was a nice guy, too. We were cool until she asked me about my fetishes. I told her I love sniffing nasty, disgusting farts from females. I love sniffing nasty butthole burners. She, she, she spread this around our school, and I got expelled. I, <laughs> I then sent a video of me naked farting and then I lost my second account shaking my head. <laughs> I then met Brandon who was this fat loser I like to watch but ever since I said he missed his ex he sent me his, fa his fans to bully me and I even, even banned me from his channel it's bullshit. I then sent a video of me t taking, a sh taking a shit to him, and he wasn't around because he went to prison. What a loser. Then I went to Juvie the next day for sending nudes to Danny. Dumb narking bitch. I then found this cool girl named Destiny1377, and he is a cool girl. <laughs> he works at GameStop. <laughs> he works at GameStop and sends me sexy. <laughs> sends me sexy pics every day. I have a crush on him. She is such a cute girl. <laughs> then I met this chip chick who was my current GF. Yet she beats me senselessly for always calling her daddy. I now have a dying Discord server, and every server I join, I eventually get banned on. From Demon. <laughs> you actually haven't. It's the first time I've cried in the depression chamber. It's so fucking sad. It's so fucking sad. It's all true. Poor demon. <laughs> Poor demon. What a sad life. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I need some sweet Culver's nectar to cheer me up. <laughs> oh, man. Poor demon. It's so fucking sad. <laughs> oh, God. This really is the April Fool's Day episode. Here's one from Billy Bob. Um, here's the thing. I feckin' hate Trump. He embarrasses me every day. He makes us all look like backwards idiots. And frankly, the fact that he got elected means that we probably all are backwards idiots. Uh, he's ruining people's lives, dot, 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 comma. He's making horrible racist decisions, which are probably going to have long-lasting repercussions long after he's out of office. Overall, I'd be a much happier person if we found a way to deport him from every position of power he has ever had. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here's one from Taco Belly. Oh, God, no! Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know how much of this one I'm reading. Here's an, a brand new email from Taco Belly. <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Well, it all started when I was yet a boy. Specifically, when I was 12, I moved to another town. You act more drunk when you are sober. I met a couple of my best friends in this town, yet my worst enemies. I was bullied for my weight and Asian-like smile. I hated these kids and I want them to drown. I told my brother this and he no longer talks to me for it. I stole all his money from his piggy bank and shat on his car for once, so we're eating. Anywho, I met my best friend who we shall call Cha Inc. I befriended him after we both overly talked about our obsession with the poor, and he's the best and only friend I had. And my arch e arch nemesis, we will call Ray, Danny, and Brandon. I didn't know these guys IRL, but I watched them on the stream. I met Ray, female, on Discord, and he was a nice girl. We talked, and she wanted my nudes, so I gave them to her. Then she spammed them on my favorite servers, Twitter, tagging me, and spammed them on 4chan. I then sent her a video of me putting a hamster in a sock and beat the shit out of it while in the sock. Then she reported my account and I lost it. One account lost. Then I met Danny who was also, uh, who was nice and I actually met IRL. She was a nice guy too. We were cool until she asked me about my fetishes. I told her I love sniffing nasty disgusting farts from females. I love sniffing nasty butthole burners. She spread this around our school and I got expelled. I then sent a video of me <laughs> naked farting. <laughs> then I lost my second account, shaking my head. <laughs> then I met Brandon, who was this fat loser I like to watch, but ever since I said he missed his ex, he sent his fans to bully me and even banned me from his channel. It's bullshit. I then sent a video of me taking his shit to him, but he wasn't around because he went to prison. What a loser. I then went to Juvie the next day for sending nudes to Danny, dumb narking bitch. I then found this cool girl named Destiny1377, and he is a cool girl. <laughs> <laughs> he works at GameStop and sends me sexy pics every day. I have a crush on him. She is such a cute girl. I then met this chip chick who is my current GF, yet she beats me senselessly for always calling her daddy. I now have a dying Discord server, and every server I join, I eventually get banned on. Also says it's from Demon, but it was sent by Taco Belly. <laughs> but the email says it's from Destiny1377. What the fuck? What the hell? What happened? What? <laughs> what? Well, I don't know which one it is. The name says one thing and the email says something else. What the fuck? There has to be a... Another one. Oh my god, the... The, uh... The long hair... Uh, memory loss guy sent another email the day after he sent his first one. Hey, Monkey, this is Anazo from the stream. I messaged you on Twitter about it, but I just wanted to say that during the stream, I realized when you said two emails that I actually had sent two different emails. And the one you read was something that I meant to delete, but I guess I forgot to. Oh, so I guess I already did read his story before? That's why it sounded so familiar. But it was like a different version of it. What the fuck? Whatever. I'm so confused. I thought it sounded really familiar. Okay. Whew. Hopefully this is a real story. Because I, I can't take any more of this laughing shit, man. <laughs> I'm gonna bust a gut. Okay. 
Hopefully I entered in your email. If so, consider it a victory. If it is too late to read ahead and ignore, this person does not seem to have a full grasp on English. I'm Arthur, and I'm a junior at my school. My worst part of my life was two years ago, when high school started. Luckily, the school that caused most of my depression and suicidal thoughts made me meet my boyfriend. At this time, I started to experience high levels of gender dysphoria and was closeted to most of the people around me. Any teachers I was open about my identity to hardly cared to be considerate about it. I developed constant suicidal thoughts. My grades plummeted from an already garbage state, especially in my prestigious school district. At the end of the year, a teacher heard me say quite loudly, just another reason to kill myself, which eventually got me outed to my mom. Even if she doesn't fully accept me, it still was a good thing. I thought I would cut to today. After meeting new friends in a new school, I haven't wanted to die in almost two years. The boy I met saved my life, and he's listening right now. Keegan, I love you. That was from the email, not from me. I don't love you, Keegan. Thank you for everything and letting me become a man under your wing. He's been the best. Oh, I think they're talking to Keegan, not to me. <laughs> he's been the best thing to come out of that part of my life. Now I have a story to work on. I make comics in the school paper, which I snuck crap rave and ass cracks into. I'm not sure where to go from here. I pack, I bind, I'm out as trans to most everyone I know. What do I do next? You asking me? What, what does this person do next, folks? And Keegan-Michael Key, what's going on? Oh my god, this one comes with a trigger warning. Wait, this is from the same person. Okay, the same person wanted to send in a follow-up. Wait, no, this is just... What? It's an extended version of what we just fucking read! Don't send me the abridged one and then the long one, what the fuck? <sighs> it's annoying. But this one lo does look more interesting. It's a bit longer, I guess we'll just re... We, we gotta, we gotta, the movie trailer version and now we get to see the movie trigger warning for a mention of sexual assault I know this could bother some if not given a warning oh you've been warned I'm Arthur and I'm a junior at my high school the worst part of my life was almost four year, uh, four year was four almost two years ago I thought that was two years ago in the other version of it uh, blah 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 okay at this time, I was already pretty fairly anxious and stressed due to family life. Single mom, two brothers, all of us living off $13,000 a year. Car problems, you name it. I was also already a weird kid. I drew Minecraft art in middle school, and I had already questioned my sexuality. No way in hell would I come out to anyone but my crush, no matter how proud I was to identify as pan, bi, whatever it was at the time. And to give an even better hint about me, I was put in a gifted program, I excelled in reading, but the class taught robotics in Latin. I loathed it. To put it simply, I was odd from the start. As my freshman year began, I started to experience high levels of gender dysphoria, and was closeted to everyone around me. I had one close friend, uh, which I had no classes with, so any good social interaction was rare. Any teachers I was open about my identity to hardly cared to be considerate about it. Gym teachers wouldn't let me change by myself or in the guy's locker room, or would consider my preferred name. On top of this, the intense amount of pressure our school gave off was enough to turn the smartest apples rotten. Competition was through the roof, and every year they push it higher. We are rated the best school in the KC area, and they wanted every kid up to, that, up to fit that standard. I developed constant suicidal thoughts. My grades plummeted from an already garbage state, mostly due to the if it's not good, don't turn it in mentality. I thought I would kill myself before I graduated, so I didn't see a point in trying. My family's disappointment snowballed along with my social, intense social outcast for my androgynous physical appearance. To be fair, my outfits were awful, and I acted like a lazy, horny idiot half the time. I remember one time drinking a premier protein shake in the girls' locker room I was forced to use, thinking, why am I putting up with all of this? I am in so much pain. Will it ever end? Not too long in, a, a teacher heard me say quite loudly, just another reason to kill myself, which eventually got me outed to my mom. 
Even if she doesn't fully accept me as a man, it was still a good thing. I thought I would have attempted at some point when I would think about suicide every minute of the day. Summer of 2017, I was also sexually assaulted by a boy who saw my trans identity as a fetish. While it hurt me, I have healed over time. It was at a summer school program first day. A kid named Harrison pretended to bef befriend me, then grope and fondle my body in the worst possible spots. He said degrading things into my ear. I was a touched, I was a touch starved guy, but most of what I said were flat out lies. This happened outside on a community college campus next to their own police station. I was supposed to see him again last year, but he never showed up. Lucky me. The thing that changed for me, the thing that changed for me mentally is finding the things that make me not want to kill myself. At the time, I was especially into gorillas and my newly developed character characters. If I died, they'd go with me. I stuck onto that sweet dopamine like cement and forced myself to do better during the time I couldn't forget about the world. I learned you really need to work on yourself if you want change. It ain't easy, but there isn't a day I regret speaking up about what I want. I'll never regret being the first to say hi to some of my now closest friends. Cut to today. After meeting new friends in a new school, I haven't wanted to die in almost two years. The boy I met freshman year saved my life. If you're reading this on stream, he's probably listening right now. He loves your channel. Keegan, if you're listening, I love you. Not for me, from the email. Thank you for everything and letting me become a man under your wing. Oh, and fun of fact, he loves bunnies. Now I have a crazy... Now I have a story to work on. Yeah, yeah, okay, we've read that. Okay, whatever. Uh, I don't know why you sent two different versions of the same thing twice. Um, let me ask you this, folks, and this is... Not relevant to what we just read. But most transgender narratives that we get, almost all of them, all the ones in the media, all the ones we get on the show, are trans women. You go from peen to, to no peen. Sexually born male, gender female. You see what I'm saying, folks? I feel like we're missing out on these male, uh, female to male ones. Survivor had a really great one. Zeke was on two seasons of Survivor. And Zeke, the first season he was on, was just on as a gay man. We didn't find out that Zeke was trans until his second season. And it was extraordinary, because Zeke has a better beard than what I can fucking grow. But my point that I was trying to get to is if you are hypothetically not not relevant to anything we just read if you are hypothetically a high school student who is a trans boy a girl no a boy trapped in a girl's body so your whole your whole brain is working like a boy's brain but you got a girl body what what teenage boy would not love the opportunity to change in the girls' locker room, folks? That's right! I say, I say, oh, oh, golly gee willikers, you won't let the trans boy change in the men's locker room? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. I have to go watch all these hot girls fucking strip down? Oh, man! Oh, fuck, I wish I, I wish I was born as a girl and was trans. Fuck. I'm telling you, folks, what an opportunity. That's, that's, you talk about white privilege? <laughs> that's the one instance of trans privilege we'll ever have. The only one is that you can watch the people you're attracted. I guess it's kind of lesbian privilege, too, but. You know what? I take it all back. I wish I was gay. I wish I was gay so I could just watch dudes strip down. I take it all back. <laughs> gay privilege! Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on to the next story. <laughs> that is fucked up. That's, that's some fucked up shit. They should have separate bathrooms for gay people, folks! I don't want gay Billy looking at my bulge. It's not fair. 
If gay Billy gets to watch me change, I should be able to watch the girls change! Gay privilege, folks! It's a serious issue. Billy looking at my willy, that's right! You just be a trans lesbian. Problem solved. <laughs> True. True. I'm just saying, for all this talk about how they're, they're uh, uh, mistreated in society, we really should be looking at the, the bright side of life, Monty P Python style. Always look at the bright side. You can change with the girls as a boy. You could be a boy changing with the girls. Hook a monkey up. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying it. <laughs> I'm not clicking that Instagram link. Anyway. Enough of that. Let's uh, let's read a story from low effort content. What did I send this to myself? It's actually a good link. Well, I think I gotta take a look at that now. Oh, is it the the picture of me in the girls' locker room as a trans? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fuck you, bedhead Bernie. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what about buys? Eh. Fuck him. No, literally, I'll, I'll fuck any bi person. I don't care. Man and woman, I don't care. What? Who said that? What? Dear Mumkey, I've been a pretty avid fan of your content since I stumbled upon it in 2017. One of the things that helped me relate with you the most is the fact that you're so open about your depression. It seems like even when you're just joking about it, I find a lot of what you say relatable. So I thought since it's 4.30 a.m. and I can't fucking sleep, I might as well finally share my story with depression as well. I guess you could say I was kind of doomed to have some type of mental illness from the start. When I was born, my mom and dad weren't married and their tumult tumultuous... I can't fucking talk today. Their tumultuous... tumultuous five-year relationship was already on the rocks. My dad, who was an ass, who constantly cheated on my mom. I feel like we've read this one before, too. My dad was an ass who constantly cheated on my mom, and it was only after, until he finally put his hands on her that she took toddler me and my older sister, who I'll call Martha in this story, and bounced. I'm honestly still proud of her for getting out while she did because as Asperger and I both know, most battered women stick around long after they're hit the first time. <laughs> my relationship with my dad was, is, and always will be complicated. My mom allowed me to have regular visitation with my dad after they split because for all intents and purposes, my dad and I were incredibly close. As scummy as he was with the adult women in his life, he was a pretty decent dad at first. Before you even ask, no. He never beat me or sexually abused me or verbally abused me or anything like that. It wasn't like that with any of my sisters either. He even encouraged us to pursue the things we liked and what we were good at. For me, that's acting, singing, performing in general. He cared about my education a lot and would drill me over history questions when I was in school. I was a tomboy and a huge daddy's girl as a kid. Whoa! Whoa! Female fan! Stop the presses! 89% chance it'll end with being trans! He got me into a lot of the music and movies he was into. It was around the ages of seven to nine that a change happened. He met and started a relationship with a 17-year-old girl who would eventually become the mother of my three little sisters. As if that wasn't fucked up enough, my dad started doing meth around that time too, or at least that's when my mom noticed. He and my sister's mom would party all the time, neglect the house and kids, and when they would get into fights, they got physical really quickly. It got so bad, eventually my mom banned me from going to see my dad altogether, and when I became an older teen, I grew to resent him for all of it. The only person who seemed like she could stop my dad from her and trying to literally beat the life out of each other at the time was my oldest sister, Tiff. Tiff was fucking awesome. She was this petite, gorgeous, funny girl who wasn't afraid to fight anybody. 
She protected me during these fights so many times. To make an even longer tragedy shorter, Tiff and her husband died in a car accident in 2015 due to a drunk driver. I live with regret every day because I didn't speak to Tiff for months before her death due to me being estranged from my father. I actively avoided her because I thought she would try to convince me to go see him. I feel so fucking selfish. I shouldn't have let what was going on between him and I get in the way of my relationship with her. My dad and I are okay now, but as many times as he tells me it wasn't my fault, I still feel like an awful, selfish piece of shit for not seeing her. Now I'll never get to talk to her again. My relationship with my mom is great right now. She is such a sweet woman nowadays, but it took a lot for us to get there. My mom did a lot for us and sacrificed so much for me and my older sister, but when I was little, she had a very unpredictable temper. Not only that, but she would ride me for every little thing I did because I was the good kid. Martha never gave a shit about school or behaving, so if mom wasn't punishing her, she was always up my ass because she thought I was more likely to succeed. She would lose her patience with me very quickly and would throw stuff at me. One time, I remember her screaming at me for a long time because I had a hard time riding my bike without training wheels. It was so bad that my stepdad even told her to back off. All of this crazy home life turned me into an elementary school bully. When I made it to middle school, I realized that I didn't really have any friends there waiting for me because of it. And that's when I decided to change and become a nicer person. Middle school was pretty chill, but high school was utter hell for me mentally. My counselor and I both believe I started, started exhibiting signs of depression at 15. I was super involved with school extracurriculars and youth group. Yes, I was an avid church kid from the ages of 7 to 17, but now I'm an agnostic. I made good grades and I had friends, but I always felt like an outsider. Like I didn't fit in anywhere I went, even when I rolled with the misfits of my school. I lost hella weight because I was pretty much only eating lunch and occasionally dinner. I only had one boyfriend in high school and the relationship only lasted like a month, so I felt undesirable. I still feel undesirable even now. Listen, we've got a chat of 95 incels that, based on your story alone, already desire you. <laughs> Don't you worry. Just say hello in the chat. We'll solve that problem immediately, folks. Immediately. I am told I am good looking by my peers even today, but to be honest, I don't really see it. Are you a straight woman? If so, you don't need to be attracted to yourself. That's the lesson we all must learn. You don't need to be attracted to you. What are you, gay for yourself? No. You let the other people be attracted to you on their own. Don't you worry about it. Don't you question it. Just let them do it. What? If they want to be attracted to you, just let them do it. You don't need to be attracted to you. I'm not attracted to me. That's gay as hell. <laughs> Even though I am. <laughs> Looking pretty good lately. But no. Don't worry about it. Let them be attracted. I'm not saying that just to humble brag either. I wear sweats all the time anymore. And I barely wear makeup. <laughs> Fuck off, Tomas. <laughs> Even though I've had a huge passion for makeup artistry since I got to college. I started withdrawing from the world and things I loved like drama club and choir weren't fun for me anymore. I started cutting myself senior year. I managed to stop after a few months thanks to my best friend who I'll name Sky, but I still struggle with self-harm to this very fucking day and I hate it. By the time my senior year rolled around, Tiff had died and I was suicidal. I looked up online for different types of ways to end it. I got so close to actually doing it once that I recall taking a cocktail of meds from the medicine cabinet in my bathroom and it just ended up getting me really weirdly high. Thank fuck for my teenage stupidity. I honest to god don't know how I made it to 21. When I got to college, I started taking the free counseling services they provided, and I still see my counselor today. I take an SSRI for my depression, and it really helps. But it doesn't make my continuing family drama less hard to deal with, and it doesn't make me a better friend, apparently. 
I recently just got into a huge fight with my roommates about smelling like pot when I come to the dorm. Sometimes, even though we all moved in together after I made it damn well clear that I smoke on the reg. They all have smoked with me except for one of them, and I know for a fact that two would not pass a piss test. I have recently become scared of weed though because I feel like I'm developing an emotional dependence on it instead of just doing it for fun after I get done with homework. This makes me feel even more guilty about the fight because as shady and hypocritical as I think my roommates are, they do have a point. Our RA has called a meeting at like 9pm tomorrow and I'm scared she's gonna address it and I'll look like the bad guy even more. Uh, I've been sleeping in my car and spending all my time in the library to avoid them. I wish I could just move on from this, but it feels like every problem I run into never really ends. It just evolves. I've been eating less like I did in high school again, and I feel so fucking alone right now. The only thing keeping me from killing myself is my love for my family, the friends I have outside of my dorm, and my ambitions for after college. Honestly, if any of those three things change, I feel like I just might crack. Hell, I'll probably crack regardless. It's only a matter of time. I can't ever escape my depressive episodes permanently, even with medication. If you end up... If you actually end up reading this, then thank you for giving me the time of day, Mumkey. It means a lot. Keep posting, keep your head up, and I hope to see another installment of the Monkey Box sometime soon. I really enjoyed that first video. Well! Well, Lady of the Night! Inappropriate thing to say. You'll be excited to know that the Monkey Box 2 is up! People have watched it, people have praised it as the second coming of Monkey Jesus, folks! That's right! The Monkey Box 2, the latest monkey video in its 50-minute glory is now up on Patreon.com slash Monkey. But it'll be out for the normies like you. Probably this weekend. So don't you worry, folks. It's a coming. <laughs> That's right, Cree Man. This is just a way for me to show the video. <laughs> I chose this story in particular because <laughs> she randomly mentioned the monkey box. <laughs> now I can't release it. Now I, I, I dropped four videos on my channel today. <laughs> There's no way. Um. Yeah, what, what advice do you guys have for uh, for this story? Anything? Emo tomboys are so hot. True. True. Especially when they're wearing all the sweats like she said she does. She has low self-esteem. Some guys find that hot. I don't know. I don't know. Wow, we've been getting a lot of stories tonight, folks. A lot of stories came in tonight. I have a feeling some of these might be some trolls <laughs> that we'll get to months from now. But Tomas did really want me to read his story. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Story from Tomas. Yo, Monkey, it's your mod Tomas here. I need some advice here from my favorite YouTuber, so I wanted to tell you the story of my. F I I fucking know this girl. <laughs> I met her at the the fan meetup, Tomas. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you the story of. M oh. Oh. Oh, this is genuine. Maybe I shouldn't read that. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna read this because I think she's here, Tomas. <laughs> That's uh, horrible. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go back to the actual stories. We don't need to embarrass Tomas in front of himself. Cucked. You need advice? What advice do you want me to give? <laughs> we, uh... Okay, I know what. Let's give him some advice. Okay. Embarrassing Tomas time. Yo, Monkey. It's your mod Tomas here. I need some advice here from my favorite YouTuber. So I wanted to tell you the story of my feelings with this girl who I love. <laughs> I met her over Discord with some loud F-slurs who wouldn't stop screaming in the microphone. 
She's a fuck. She's a mod in this chat, Tomas. You know she's here. And I made some small talk. Eventually adding each other to our friends list. She private called me one day out of the blue, asking me for help with Twitch and YouTube. That adorable fool didn't know how to change her Twitch username. After helping, she and I got into a deep discussion, opening up to each other with personal problems and feelings. Growing quite a liking to her, I invited her into my group of friends, where she fit in much better than the screaming F slurs. <laughs> she very quickly became an integral part of our little community, often joining the voice chat with her cute, but admittedly weird, cat voice. Despite this weirdness, it's what ultimately made me fall for her. The feelings kickstarting like an engine. She and I grew closer over time, my feelings growing stronger in equal amounts. We'd do everything together. Watching The Office, listening to music with her, and reciting tongue twisters together. One day, though, she came out of the blue and began talking about a boyfriend. I've had to stay in silent pain hearing her speak about this Keeping my feelings hidden in the shadow. Yeah, nice fucking... Nice shadowy feelings, Tomas. I've grown to love her. And I've added a fo... Did, did you not know that I've met this person? She came to the Boomer vs. Zoomer show, Tomas. I've grown to love her. And I've added a photo of her to this email. I'd rip out a fucking kidney just to have a chance with her. She makes my heart warm up like the core of the earth. I hope you can help me out here. Wow, uh, Lou, I think you, uh, I think you, uh, <laughs> you have, uh, a true prince. But Tomas sounds like a, a Spanish name. What, what's the Spanish word for prince? She said he's fucking with me. I hope you die. <laughs> no, I don't know. That sounds pretty uh, genuine. That sounds pretty genuine. I think, uh, I think Tomas and, uh, Lou, the moderator, they need to, uh, we need to <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just saw a, a story titled My Story of Being a Trans Fortnite Gamer Girl, and then the text reads, Here's the thing I fucking hate Trump. So <laughs> we're getting some real April Fool's Day stories today. Oh, humanity. All of my suffering on this world has been at the hands of humanity, particularly women. Really? Really? I should just save these stories for next April Fool's Day. <laughs> Tomas, here's my advice. Just because soccer has a goalie doesn't mean you can't score, baby! And with that, it's been another Monday night depression chamber. For some reason, April Fool's Day edition, folks. For some fucking reason. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. We're going to try to do this show every Monday night around 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to tune into the Depression Chamber time and time again, you know when and where to find it. And that's about it. I uh, hope you all got something from this stream. I feel really bad for Animated Demon. <laughs> and Destiny1377 sounds like they have some rough uh, things going on. It wasn't even an hour. It's been an hour and a half. Anyway. I started the stream earlier than 10. It's, it's been an hour and a half. Bye, everybody.